It begins in a small room in Jerusalem. It ends in the royal courts of the Roman Empire. What starts as a small movement between a handful of people grows into a worldwide phenomenon, challenging empires, changing paradigms, and uprooting what man has always believed about God. Though the players may change through trial and conflict, the story remains the same. This good news, this gospel, is preached by Peter and Paul, read about in letters to Rome, Corinth, and Philippi, and continues to change the lives of everyone who hears it today. You will be my witnesses, said Jesus. He promised that the good news would reach the ends of the earth. This is the church under construction. This is the book of Acts. Welcome to the Acts series. I'm very excited about the fact that you decided to join with a couple of your friends and family and just people that you really have some relationship with, really to spend the next six weeks of your time together to study the book of Acts. I, I'm, I'm praying, here, here's the deal, I'm praying that God would really use this time, that these next six weeks, I'm just praying that God would do something very um, powerful in all of our hearts. Our vision here at New Life is to lead people into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ. And we believe, we believe passionately that in order to grow, we have to have times where we can just stop and meet with other people and just talk about God, talk about what God is doing in our lives and really allow the scripture to transform us. So I just want to take a moment and welcome you. Honestly, some of you like are still asking, what did I get myself into? Others of you are trying to figure out like, okay, somebody invited me and you're not even 100% sure what this is all about. And what I, what, I, what I want to encourage the whole group right now, regardless where you may be meeting as a group, it may be in a home, maybe in a restaurant, it may be um, just in some environment, maybe a dorm room, in a college environment, whatever it may be, I want you just to take a deep breath, all of us. Just take a deep breath. And let's really just um, commit to God that these next six weeks, um, God is going to do an incredible, incredible work in your life as we continue our study of the book of Acts. You know, there's a couple things I have found when groups come together, like up front, you need to do. All of you need to gather just to kind of clear your calendars, really say, okay, let's all for the next six weeks clear our calendar. Or maybe, um, you know, there's agreed upon, like we're going to get together, we're going to go out to coffee, spend an evening together, but really make this a priority. I also want to encourage you to just have fun. Have fun. That we, while we have questions you see there in your study guide and there are um, different formats we use. Man, just have fun and really let this be a time that God will do something special in your life. Um, the other thing is you may have friends. Like you're going, okay, man, I have some friends that really need a sense of deep community. Friends that you know that are disconnected. Perhaps they're not even followers of Christ yet. Perhaps they're neighbors. Invite them, invite them. This is like uh, week number one of the group and this is a still a phenomenal time for you to invite, for, invite your friend. So again, I want to encourage you. We're going to jump right into the book of Acts, and we're going to look at um, the study of the book of Acts. We're in like the, the second part of the book of Acts, starting with Acts chapter 9, but really trusting that God is going to do something incredible in your life. We follow a format just to kind of keep it simple. We call it the SOAP format, S-O-A-P, where we start off with the scripture every week. And so I want to encourage you as a group to read the scripture, enjoy the scripture. Then we make observations. And really, this is a time just for all of us to kind of look at the text and go, huh, what does that mean? And the study guide will help you with that. It will help ask questions, help trigger thoughts in your mind. And then the most important part of this group time is the application. In other words, how does this scripture transform us? What does it mean for like everyday life? What does it mean for like a Monday or Tuesday? application and then there's a moment of prayer where we really pray that um, God would take his scripture take the discussion we have and really transform that into our lives and so we're in the book of Acts and Acts is a phenomenal book if you're new to Bible study you'll love the book of Acts It's a great beginning point Acts is a book that tells us the historical um, roots what the church is all about where the church started uh, sometimes you may ask, like, where did all this begin? Well, it started 2,000 years ago, and we have this incredible um, document called the Book of Acts that gives us the historical beginnings of the church. It tells us, like, where did everything begin? Where did everything begin? This week, we land, we start right with Acts chapter 9, and we, we, we meet a guy in the Book of Acts. His name is Saul. Later on, his name becomes Paul. But we meet this guy, and Saul was the guy that was the church's enemy. 
Matter of fact, when you read Acts 9, you see there in your study guide, he, he, he was the guy that would breathe out murderous threats towards the church. He was the guy <laughs> that, that um, persecuted Christians, killed Christians, and we find him in this story where he's on his way to Damascus to get permission from the high priest to actually take Christians and take people that belong to the what they call back in those days the way and throw them into prison. And here's what happened in Acts 9. As you read it, you read it. The scripture part of it, it to me is phenomenal. As you kind of read that text, what you find out in Acts 9 is that Jesus appears to Saul. Jesus appears to this guy that was the most unlikely guy to ever get saved. The guy that was the church's enemy, the persecutor. He appears to him and he says, Saul, I know your name. And Saul has what we call a conversion. He has this moment where he comes face to face with Jesus. It was a powerful moment in Acts as you read it. Enjoy that part of the story just to see um, Paul, his name's Saul, and later on becomes Paul in the book of Acts, his conversion. And what goes on in the middle of the story, we're going to pick up together in our part. So that's kind of the context of the story. We're going to pick up with our part, um, a guy named Ananias in this story. And I want to look at the story and um, we're going to pick up at Acts 9:10 um, that Paul's just converted. He's trying to figure out what's going on in his life. And then we meet this guy named Ananias that becomes a part of the story of Saul's life. And let's look at the story in Damascus there was a disciple named Ananias. So we learned the disciple, there was this guy, we don't know really much about him. His name was Ananias. But the Lord called to him in a vision and said this, Ananias, now pause there. Can you imagine like you're praying, maybe you're doing your soap devotions. You know, you're just having this moment with God. All of a sudden God calls your name. God says, hey, what? he names you out loud. He says, Ananias. And here's what Ananias responded. He says, yes, Lord. Now, I don't know about you, but that when if you hear God speak and saying yes, Lord, is a um, natural response, but often you got to be careful what you're saying yes to. And here what, what happens as Ananias is having this time with God, and he says, yes, Lord. The Lord said to him, here's what God says to him, I want you to go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying. <laughs> here's Ananias, he's going, you want me to do What? You want me to go and ask for Saul, the guy that's putting Christians in prison, the guy that's martyring Christians? You want me to go do what? And I love this part of the scripture. God, I just love scripture. If you could just be Ananias for a moment. He's going like this. God, you're telling me that you want me to go and find this guy named Saul for he is praying. And he goes on. He says, in a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hand on him to restore his sight. In a vision... So this guy named Saul that all the church hated, that all the church feared, he's seen you, Ananias, come, so, and, and you're going to lay your hands on and restore his sight. Lord, Ananias answered, and listen, this is what I love about Scripture. If you're new to Bible study or uh, wherever you may be in understanding of Scripture, you'll find that there's a humanity part of the Bible. And here's what Ananias said. He said, Lord, Ananias answered, I have heard many reports about this man. And all the harm he has done to your holy people in Jerusalem. And he has come here with authority from the chief priest to arrest all who call on your name. Ananias is going saying, time out, God. Time out. Uh, and as you're in your group, talk about this. Talk about just how God can even handle those questions. Or God can handle us being honest when we're talking to him. And, 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 and Ananias is going, God, you don't get it. Paul, like... He's like, a, he, he wants to persecute Christians. And you want me to go? And you want me to pray for him? And you want me to be a part of his story? I just love the humanity. Come on, as you make observations in the scripture, enjoy the fear that Ananias had. Enjoy um, just his doubt. And, and here's what God says, but the Lord said to him, go, go. Ananias, I'm telling you, I have a mission for your life. You're going to be a part of a story of another person's life. Go, this man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and to the people of Israel. Go, Ananias. Here's what he's saying. Ananias, I want you to be a part of his story, of Paul's story, because Paul's story is going to be a part of the kingdom story, of God's story. Ananias, I want you to go because I'm going to, listen, listen in verse, nine, eight, verse 16, I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. 
God says, Ananias, I want you to do something uncomfortable. I want you to go. I want you to go and be a part of someone else's story. I want you to get outside your comfort zone, Ananias, and I want you to go and pray for Saul later on to be known as Paul. And read the story in your group. He goes, he prays for him. God heals Saul. He can see again. He gives him back his sight. God does an amazing work in the life of Saul, later on to be known as Paul, because Ananias, one disciple that we don't know much about, was willing to be a part of his story. Now, as you go through your group, scripture, observation, where's the application here? I want you to think about the application points, and there's a couple things I think of, but talk about it. To ask this question, so what? What does all this mean? And one of the first things I, I think it means for us is that God can transform anyone. If God can take the guy in the church that, that murdered Christians, the guy in the church that was the least likely to get saved, God can transform anyone. And you may know people in your life, you wonder, man, could God ever? Could God ever? And here, let me tell you, yes, he can. And, and I want to speak that to you. I want to encourage you in that, is that, that there are people we have in our life that if that person ever walked into the church, we'd go, wow, we'd all be shocked. That's the person that God loves. That's the person God cares. And another application point is this. It may be you, it may be you, your involvement that really helps someone else begin to understand the gospel. It was Ananias, this disciple. We don't know much about him. That's all we know is his name. And yet he was there. He was willing to go out of his way to go to um, Saul's house, pray for him, and see God do amazing things. And here's what I want to suggest to you. We don't know much about Ananias, but we do know this. He was a part of Paul's story. He was a part of someone else's story. And as a point of application, God has called us all to be a part of someone else's story. God has called us all to look around and listen for those moments where we can say yes to God, even when we don't understand it, even when we don't get what God is saying. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I will be a part of someone else's story. I want us to take a moment as we walk through the scripture observation, application, moment of prayer, just praying for all of us. You may know people that you're going, man, if that person ever walked in the church, <laughs> you'd be shy. Let's pray for that person. Let's pray for that person. I want us to pray that God would use all of us as, as a part of someone else's story. Pray that God would take your story and it would intersect with someone else's story. And that all of a sudden we can together tell the story of God. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for the group that's meeting right now. The first week, I pray that even the beginnings of this group coming together, God, that it would be an amazing group. I pray that, Father, every person here right now would sense the presence of the living God. Lord, I pray as we um, just grow together, as we have fun together, as we even serve together, that, Father, there would be just amazing, amazing time in this group. I pray deep community would happen. And so, Lord, we pray from Acts chapter 9 right now. God, we pray for people that we think about outside the faith, that they would ever walk into church, it would just shock us all. God, I pray that for those people. God, I pray that you put them on our hearts and our minds. I pray that our hearts would be burdened. And God, I pray that all of us would be like Ananias in this story where we would be willing to say, yes, Lord. Yes, that God, we would be willing to be a part of someone else's story. Father, I just pray for this group. God, even as, as, as they go into discussion now and read the scripture and make observation, God, I pray that there would just be a, a deep sense of community, a deep sense of connection and friendship that would happen. God, I pray that all of us would grow, that these next six weeks you would transform us into the image of Jesus Christ. God, we give you praise and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.